Welcome to the, the Springfields Festival Garden Summer Dahlia Collection for 2022. You'll find here 120 different varieties of gorgeous dahlias across 15 acres in 22 garden beds. 200 dahlias have been pot grown and during early May, the other 1400 have been early planted. As I walk through the gardens, I can see the most gorgeous array of dahlias wonderful colours, different shapes, different sizes, absolutely exquisite dahlias. And this is Andy Boyton. Andy is the head gardener here at Springfields, responsible for the dahlia collection. And Andy's going to talk to us about some of his favourite dahlias and explain about their classifications. Here we have a little selection of just some of the varieties that we grow at Springfields. Um, we've got um, probably about 130 varieties that we know of. We've got some varieties that are in pots that we are waiting for them to flower to name. That does happen that when we lift them that they lose a label. Um, so that's what we do. We, we pop them up and we grow them on until we know what they are. Um, we don't have all the classifications here. There are 14 uh, classifications of dahlia. Flowers are, are classified for really for a couple of reasons to define the flowers of the type. Um, and generally as, as dahlias have been bred obviously from a single uh, one like this, which is very close to the original um, species dahlia that came from Mexico. Uh, these wonderful colours have evolved um, and it's been necessary now to actually classify them into their various groups. So we've got, as I said here, the singles, uh, we've got uh, pom-poms and ball dahlias and, and decorative dahlias. By far our biggest group of dahlias we have, they seem to be ones that are the ones that are more promoted. Um, and we've got these dinner plate ones here, which you can see are these very, very large exuberant oh, yeah. flowers that are massive beakers so as its name suggests dinner plate is, the, is where they are but these actually are decorative dahlias they are the same as the smaller decorative dahlias there but they just happen to be that much bigger um, and they are Lovely. actually of their own not on their own classification but still included within that we have cactus flowers which have well, semi-cactus like this one which has this lovely tubular flower through it um, and then also we have uh, the cactus flower, which is this one here, which is slightly more flatter petal, uh, as you can see the semi-cactus, mm. a bit more rounded. Um, in the gardens, our most productive variety is this one, um, and this is called White Star. We by far have more White Star tubers than the others, uh, and I dare say when we lift this, it's probably about a third more tubers will oh, grow gosh. in the garden. So yeah, it's a very, very um, good, good variety, and it, it, it multiplies very, very well. So we always have plenty of those. But outside of that, um, in the terms of looking after them, they're very easy to look after. Uh, deadheading is quite important. They can be affected by, by earwigs. Uh, what you can do there is have a bamboo cane with a bit of straw inside in a pot uh, on a stick. And basically the earwigs will go in there and all you need to do is just knock them out and relocate them if you didn't want to kill them. But Clever. obviously that's up to you. But that's a way of controlling them. Black fire can be a bit of an issue. So just be careful of the sprays you use, especially where we've got bees. Uh, bees love the single flowers. They're the best things for them. So um, it's very important about how and when you spray if you do. Um, sometimes just removing the piece of plant that's got the black fly on is probably a better way of doing it than, than spraying chemicals here and there and everywhere. But outside Side of that very easy to look after we lift ours every year we clean the tubers and we put them into dry storage till next year when we plant them back and we just grow them on and as you see uh, that's the result hi Andy I'm really pleased to be here today I absolutely love dahlias particularly their vibrant colors I wonder if you could give me some tips about where to plant them what tip what to variety to plant and where in the garden well generally there's there is a dahlia for every application in the garden. We have very small dahlias, very compact, to the very taller dahlias that we're standing in front of now. So it's purely looking at um, catalogues or online um, people and see the final height um, for what you want and also the choice of colours because as you see there are masses of colour choices to do. Mm. Um, you might want to think about somewhere that if it's a little bit exposed maybe not to go for a dinner plate variety where the wind may get to it but generally most decorative ones are very very sturdy stemmed as you can see here these these are very very good for general garden purposes these, these sit on an island bed so they have all the elements all around them. Um, if you've got a small window box there are even dailies that are very small for even growing in window boxes. Beautiful. I also love to cut flowers 
Um, are there any particular varieties that would be suitable for cutting? Yeah, again, I always tend to go for the decorative types like these. They, they, uh, the cactus are very good. Maybe not such the big flowers again, because they do take a lot of space up in a vase. So something, a medium sized flower like that is absolutely perfect. And again, if you're looking for a, a florist selection, look in the catalogues. Uh, you know, many of them do, do actually sell um, a selection of colors. So if you're looking for a range of colors for the year, you can buy five tubers and you can have a range of colors for that so depending on what you want to do there is there is lots and lots of choice for that but generally I would say if you're looking for florist stuff the big ones are great they do make great displays but they do eat up a lot of space if you're doing cut flower work so okay. I always tend to look for something like a like a decorative. Andy I wonder if you could give me some advice on how to deadhead dahlias and um, put to promote strong growth. Well first thing is by deadheading what you're actually doing is encouraging more flowers so by doing that we're actually going to make sure that they will flower um, it also it looks good aesthetically it's much more pleasing to take away the dead flowers um, and when this, things like dailies particularly when they do have these long flower stems I always like to make sure that we cut them right the way back um, if you leave too much stem what's going to happen is if it's cut too short that's going to do nothing it's just going to rot so the best thing to do is, is, is take that away completely. Right away, yeah, okay. so there. Um, and then basically when the flowers are finished, dahlias tend to look like this. And if you, you get them and squeeze them, they just pass a little bit of water. So you know that's not, it's actually finished and not a new bud that's gonna come into effect. Um, and just routinely do that all the time. Uh, varieties like this one here, uh, masses of flowers. So this one was one that we will regularly be deadheading. Andy, I really love to encourage the bees in to my garden. Can you tell me which of the dahlias are the best pollinators? Well generally the single flower dahlias like this are the are the best kind. It's much easier for the bees to actually get in there and get the pollen. Um, a particular good one is Bishop Alundaf that we use and is very commonly used by um, a lot of bee borders. So if you've got a plant, um, we generally leave those dahlias in every year. Uh, it means they, they will develop a little bit earlier but unfortunately because of the hot weather this year uh, we haven't got any flowers to show you but it's a lovely dark foliage one but um, this is one of my particular favourites that, that red is Poppy Scotland um, but these are very good and the single single ones are generally recognised to be the best pollinators for bees and okay. insects so yeah so um, that's what we, we tend to use and encourage the more decorative ones really are more that and they are much harder for bees to actually get any any pollen from so always try and get if you want a pollinator border single flowers are your best bet